Okay, and we are now on chapter three of Snow Treasure. When Peter went back to bed, he was far too excited to sleep. What was Vic Uncle Victor planning? It was some dangerous scheme, whatever it was, and somehow he, Peter, was in it too. It was a way to save 13 tons of gold bullion from Norway. That was all he could understand, but how he was going to do it was more than he could hope to know. The men's voices were low and he could hear only a buzz and he lay thinking of Uncle, Uncle Victor's words. It was about going to the snake on a sled, he remembered. The snake was where Uncle Victor kept his boat. So perhaps he wanted to put the gold on the boat and sail away. But in that case, why didn't he do it himself? Why did he want Peter? Uncle Victor could sail away, all right, for the fjords were open all winter and he was the best navigator in the world. It must be he wanted Peter to carry the 13 tons of gold on his sled to the boat. But if he took as much as he could on every trip, he supposed he'd be an old man before he was finished. Say, he sat up in bed, he has so many children in Riswick School, so that's what he means. All are to help, even the girls. Peter fell asleep, figuring how long it would take 25 boys and girls to carry 13 tons of gold. For how long a distance did Uncle Victor say? 12 miles? It's a strange problem, for he had no idea how much they could carry at a time. Some of the boys had awfully rickety sleds that wouldn't hold much more than themselves. He guessed he probably could carry 75 pounds. But little fellows like old Svensson and Niels Larsen couldn't take half that even downhill. Lucky it's downhill and not up, was Peter's last thought before he was sledding down a mountain of dreams. The next day he tried to find out what he had brought, uh, what had brought Uncle Victor back from Oslo so suddenly. But neither his father nor his mother would tell. They were talking in low voices when he got to the breakfast table. But not Lovisa, his mother was saying. I couldn't bear to have Lovisa out of my sight. Yes, and Lovisa, his father was saying. We talked all through the night. Victor's right. For days I've been trying to figure a way out, and Victor hit it the first night home. It's the only way, if we're caught, if something happens before we're ready. Why did Uncle Victor come back from Oslo, Peter asked. He always comes back in April, his father ans answered. Not when there's this much ice. Well, ask him. His father drank his coffee and rose from the table. On the way to school, Peter and Lovisa saw an unusual sight in the town square. Uncle Victor and a crowd of men were building a wooden shed right beside the statue of King Hakon. And another one on the north and one on the far side and a big one near the school for the children. Uncle Victor was talking to the postman. Why, well, hello, Uncle Victor. Lovisa had not seen her uncle as Peter had the night before. What are you doing? Air raid shelters, he explained. Is that why you've come back from Oslo? Partly. They built a lot of these in the south. Are the Germans coming, Uncle Victor, or would it be Russians, like in Finland? Hardly either, Lovisa. Certainly not the Germans, way up here in the Arctic circles, too far for even them. Then it must be the Russians. No, Lovisa, it's not the Russians. Then why are you building air raid shelters if it's not the Russians and it's too far for the Germans? Uncle Victor had to smile at what he called the relentless logic of childhood. It's always well to be prepared, he answered. If you're prepared, it won't matter if they do come. But it's silly if they're too far away. At school, day, school that day, it was hard to put one's mind on lessons. All the children knew of the air raid shelters and wanted to talk of nothing else. There was a feeling of restlessness that no one could explain. Some of the primer class was in tears and had to be sent home, and often as an older brother or sister had to go along. Mr. Anders, the schoolmaster, tried to comfort his pupils. He said that air raid shelters were found in every country, but here they were only a precaution. He was sure they would never have to be used. Norway is safe from war, he said. Our country's been at peace for over a hundred years. We've no quarrel with anyone and no one has a quarrel with us. Let's not worry about a thing as unlikely as war. There was a knock on the classroom door. Uncle Victor came in. He was a great favorite with all the children. When he visited the school, he always told a sea story. And so today that settled, they settled back for one of his salty tales. But it was no sea story that brought Captain Lundstrom on this occasion. He whispered a few words to Mr. Anders and then spoke to the class. Now that we're building bomb shelters, we ought to have an air raid drill, he said. We want to teach everyone to go in orderly fashion to the shelters and not be crowding the doorways. Just like a fire drill, Mr. Andrews said. Just like a fire drill, Uncle Victor repeated. In a fire drill, you have your leaders and lieutenants. So with an air raid drill, now besides the boys and girls at this school learning to take care of themselves and not be a worry to their parents, there are other things they can do for their country. For that reason, I'm going to help you form a club. If he had promised to sail his boat to the moon, he could not have had a quieter audience. You want to know what kind of club? Well, for lack of a better name, we'll call it the Defense Club. Your president, you must obey in everything. You must do all he asks and must never question him. For your president, I am going to appoint Peter Lundstrom. And that is the end of chapter three of Snow Treasure.